Hi, uh, today we're going to talk about pathology of colonic disorders. In the first part, we're going to uh, go over normal histology of colon, and this is my information. So colon, or large intestine, basically completes absorption and retrieves water and sodium from the food and uh, makes the fecal residue. It's part of the gastrointestinal tract, extending from cecum, going to ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid, and rectum. It's around 150 centimeter. However, the length is different in um, different individual based on height and other conditions. So tubular GI tract has four layers, basically has mucosa, submucosa, muscular propria, adventitia serosa, like any other tubular GI tract, so anywhere else. So normal histology of colon, you have mucosa, as we said, you have submucosa, muscular propria, serosa. Why do we need to know uh, the layers? It's basically to stage carcinomas and also to understand the disease processes. So mucosa, whenever a tumor is located in the mucosa only, is carcinoma in situ. If it goes to submucosis T1, moving to T2 and T3, and management of the tumors are different. Also, some disease processes involve transmirally the GI tract, and some involves only focally the mucosa. We'll talk about those in details when we move forward. So colonic mucosa basically is composed of deep crests and see that there is no villi formation. It's very smooth on the surface. Let's look at the mucosa on a higher power. It consists of epithelium that's lining the surface and going deep into the crypts. It looks like tubes in the rack as we spoke. And they are the same distance from each other in the normal condition. The epithelium is consists of goblet cells. Look at all these goblet cells, the mucin filled cells, the nuclei is at the base. And also some absorptive cells, these pink cells in between. These are some absorptive cells. You also have panel cells and neuroendocrine cells. And panel cells only on the right side. We're going to look at this panel cells and endocrine cells in the next slide. This, this, the space in between the crests is basically composed of lamina propria. Lamina propria, you have plasma cells, you have eosinophils with these red granules. So plasma cells, lymphocytes, eosinophils can be present normally in the colonic, in between colonic mucosa, as long as there are not too many of them and they're not expanding the distance between the crypts. Muscularis mucosa is the thin layer of muscle underneath that cause the, the gentle agitation. What is the function of mucosa? And we spoke, absorption of water and passage of stool. So this is a high power picture. You can see again your goblet cells, these mucinous cells, the nuclei at the base. You have absorptive cells in between these pink cells. And also uh, you have panet cells. Panet cells are these cells with chunky granules, very chunky granules, towards the apex, towards the lumen. Endocrine cells are these cells that have teeny tiny granules towards the base, nuclei is on top. So this is colonic epithelium. Submucosa is basically a loose connective tissue. It has fibroadipose tissue. There are some adipose tissue. There are some fibrosis. It has blood vessels in it. And it also has some ganglion cells and nerve bundles, which is a mice nerve plexus. It's a parasympathetic nerve that innervates the epithelial and muscularis mucosae. Muscular is propria, uh, basically creates peristalsis. It has inner circular smooth muscle layer and outer longitudinal small layer. In between, you have your ganglion cells and nerve bundle, which is the uh, our bulk plexus. It's parasympathetic nerves for muscle contraction. It's, it's uh, caused the peristalsis. So in summary, large intestine completes the absorption and retrieves water and sodium from the food in luminal contents, and then it makes the fecal residue. Understanding the normal colonic histology will help you diagnose disease processes and stage the tumor. 
Thank you for um, attention and here's my information.